I got one. I got a bass or something. I got some kind of fish. Let's see what I got. Oh, I had a bass. <laughs> well, folks, hey, what do you think? <laughs> we're fishing urban areas today. I'm in my little canoe and we're fishing right here in Naples, Florida. And uh, I, it, I, it's, it's, it's right here by Walmart. It's right here. It's a little old canal off the side of, of the road here. And I just lost a bass. I couldn't set the hook good. I, I was up underneath this bridge. And so I'm going to get out here. And the thing opens up up here. It makes a big left-hand turn. It goes right by the highway. And in a minute, by those red lights, we'll see all sorts of, uh, all sorts of traffic. But in the meantime, I'm just going to try a couple different things. That was a worm strike, OK? I had one hit the, the, the venerable uh, Cinco. You know they're going to always hit a Cinco. But what I'd like to see, because it's a rainy day, I'd like to see them hit this, this popper. That would be a lot of fun if we could get them on a topwater bite. So I'm just going to make nice long casts up the edge of the, of the canal, let it sit a while, let the ripples die away, and then just kind of twitch it along and see if I can't get a, a good bass. You know, topwater fishing is always a lot of fun. Uh oh, I'm on, I was on some weeds there. Now, I don't know if there's any fish in this canal to speak of or not. This is just kind of an experiment. <laughs> I've been, I go by it every day, you know, going, uh, going to, to the store and uh, up and down. I've never, I've never seen anybody ever fish this canal. That's the main thing. And looking at the bank, I don't see where they've walked around the bank. There's no signs that say I can't fish. Now, maybe. We can't fish here, but if that's the case, there's zero signs that say anything about fishing. So I would assume that it's all right to fish here because it's a public road, it's a public waterway. I would think, and I, they don't own the water. You know, uh, we can fish the water. It's just a matter of access, whether or not it's ac accessible to the fishermen. Well, anyway, we'll try it. Okay, boys, back to the Cinco. Can't beat a Cinco. You know, if there's any fish around, I, and this is an exploratory trip. <laughs> you know, I have no idea if there's any bass in this canal. It just looks good. There's plenty of water. And one thing I've noticed is these canals are all tied together so little fry could get back and forth through culverts and stuff. So there's got to be some bass in here. I just don't know how many. Well, I got frog togs. I got frog togs. Strike. Strike, I got a strike. Okay, I got one. I got one. I got a. Oh, shoot, I had one. Man, I had a good one on. I had a big old bass on. Broke my line. What'd I do? Broke my daggone line. Son of a gun. Okay, folks. That last bass broke my line. I got some 297 green pumpkins. These are seconds. And I got them from Gary Yamamoto. And there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that they call them a second. They take them off the line uh, and package them up for us pros to use. And I got a little small 3 aught hook. That's a 5-inch Cinco. And a, a little bitty screw-in weight. I got a small little sixteenth of an ounce screw-in weight. I'm going to screw it into the very front of the worm, like so. And then I fished. The fish broke me off right there. It was probably a big bass. And I'm just going to. And I was working it real slow. Really a slow deal. We'll see what happens. Well, when you don't know what's going on, the way to, the barometer, the barometer of fishing is that Cinco. If, if, if I think there's a bass here, I can take these 297 green pumpkin Cinco's and I can catch a fish if there's any here. Something's got it. Something's got it underneath the boat. Oh, yeah. What do I have? What do I have? Oh, yeah, what do I have? Oh, yeah, look at the big bass. Big bass. <laughs> I told you. What do you think, folks? <laughs> the big old bass. Yes, sir. I knew there had to be bass in here. 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 
Oh, it's wrapped around the tip somehow. It's not coming off at that tip. Yeah. Okay, he hit, he hit pretty deep. He hit pretty deep, so I'm gonna have to, okay. Well, I kind of let him take it a little bit. It's only a couple pounds, but I'm gonna have to be real careful and try to get him out. I'm gonna come in this other side right here and try to twist that hook around. I let him take it a little bit too long. That's the problem with summertime uh, worm fishing. If you don't set the hook real quick, you'll have a problem like this. It came out real easy. Okay, a nice little keeper bass, I don't know. Hey, that's something, something to say. Okay, what I did, and I don't know if that's a big deal or not, but I came off this eight, six or eight or 10 foot shelf and I got pretty deep. I was out here, I mean, I, I, I threw it up shallow like this, like that, but then I came out pretty far out. So let's see, I'll stop the boat again and see if there's another one there. Could be, sometimes there's more than one fish in a spot. I came out real slow with it. I came out deep. I'm just pulling it out now. It's going deeper and deeper and deeper. I'm going deeper and deeper. It's sinking down, it's sinking down deeper. It's probably six or eight feet deep. Probably maybe, maybe deeper than that. Deeper, 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 deeper. Deeper, I'm just kind of pulling it slow and easy. This is kind of finesse worm fishing. This, this is not power fishing. I'm a power fisherman as well. I do a lot of flipping and heavy spinner baits and big frogs and all that stuff. But in this kind of place, this isn't power fishing. This is kind of finesse stuff. Just that deep with the light tackle, light, light leader. See if I can't get another one. I've had, I've had three strikes on a Cinco, and that tells me there's bass here. But I don't know how big they are. That last one felt real big. I kind of felt it was like a big fish. I'm going to try to get a topwater bite going. Let's see if I can get a topwater bite going. I have a special little plug that I got from Spro Tackle. It's at what they call a Pop 80. And this particular plug, I've taken to the Everglades and I've done a couple different films on it. And this one bait right here has caught like 100 bass. It has really, really caught a lot. All the paint's gone. I've had to replace the hooks. I've had to do all kind of stuff. And it's a popper. And what I'm doing to, to catch fish on it, pretty easy. I'm basically just, you know, making a nice long cast close to the bank and just letting it sit a while. Just let it sit, let it sit till the ripples die away. Little, little pop, little pops like that. Now this, is, this part of the system gets pretty deep. If there's any bass around, there's got to be some bass up in this little cove. That's kind of, I've been looking at this little cove for years, thinking I'd like to fish back here. I've never fished back here. There's got to be some bass back there. It just looks perfect. It's all rocky. The water's clear. I see a few fish moving around. I don't know what they are. I felt like anything that bites a Cinco, I know one was a bass because that one at the bridge it jumped and I saw it. And the reason why I didn't catch it was I, I, didn't, I, I didn't have any room to set the hook and I was underneath that bridge. Come on, bass. I know there's some big ones in here. You know, that's the one thing about these small waters. I don't care if you're Connecticut or California. These small little waters produce the biggest fish. When I lived in Oklahoma, my two biggest bass I caught were off, one was off a little bitty farm pond and another was off a golf course. And the point was, Oklahoma has plenty of big lakes. And I've fished the big lakes all the time. But the two biggest bass I ever caught were out of small waters like this. So these small waters get underfished. And because they're underfished, there's some big giant bass in them.
I got one. A little one. Look at that. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that guy. <laughs> Look at that thing. Holy moly. You know, we got to throw him back. I tell you, with that, that kind of attitude, he's going to grow up to be a big fish. Because he, he's wanting to eat something as big as he is. So he's going to be a good one in the, in the years to come. <laughs> be real careful of him. There's not a lot of bass in here, so I'll get this one unhooked somehow. And be real careful. I think he'd be all right. Yeah, he's, he's all right. He, he, that didn't hurt him too bad. That didn't hurt him too bad. He's, he's going to make it. Points are always perfect. This is the perfect spot, really. This deep, deep spot right here, that point that's right there, that looks just as good as can be. I don't know that I could cast to a, a better spot in here. That's like the choice spot right there. In fact, if they don't hit a top water, I'm going to back it up with a Cinco. We know what a Cinco will do. A Cinco will catch him. Uh-oh, one hit at it. I don't know what it was. Oh, I got him, I got him, I got him, son. I got him. Let's see what I got here. Let's see what I got. Oh, yeah, look what I got. <laughs> a garfish. Oh, my heavens. I got a garfish. That's not good. I got a garfish. Uh-oh. Well... Now, what I'm going to do is very carefully find my pliers right here. Ah, beautiful. These pliers come in handy. <laughs> beautiful. There's one. I got one. I got one. I got one under the, under the bridge. <laughs> I'm on top of the plug. That's a good spot. I don't know. That was under here before, and uh, I, I had one on on a worm. And so this top water deal is maybe the deal. That worked. That worked. Not much room to work. Could have been the same fish. I don't know. Hard to say. canals like this and these hundreds and hundreds of little golf court ponds and residential ponds sooner or later I find some nice bass I didn't find any nice ones today it's kind of a kind of a tough de de deal but tomorrow I'm gonna try a new one I'm gonna try another spot uh, it's a lot of fun the anticipation is a lot of fun so you know these small waters just don't give up on these small waters these small waters can really be a godsend and remember you might just catch your biggest bass ever in small ponds like this. And so folks, okay, listen, thanks for watching this YouTube. And uh, hey, don't give up on these small orders. They'll pay off. We'll see you again soon, and thanks for subscribing.